Salutations and hallucinations, those steam defenders were back again for vaping with Uncle Jojo. Welcome back to the Vape Cave. Now then, today we are going to be looking at my newest play putty. It is known as the Billow Version 2. E. Siggity and Efro got together and made themselves a nice little old tank. And we're going to box this puppy right quick. Slap that off. And we get us a nice little manual here. This is actually a good manual for a change. Most of these are very un underwhelming and very unimpressive. This one actually gives you a pretty good bit of advice. So it's actually useful for a change. And it isn't full to overflowing with English. That's E-N-G-R-I-S-H. Software translations from Chinese to English will leave you with English. That's funny. Now among the things they're going to toss in here for you, it is in a little bag. We got some, uh, looks to be Japanese organic cotton and then a couple of pre-built coils for you. Ready to rock and roll. We have another little baggie here. Of course, it has a couple of extra posts. It has some extra post screws in it and a buttload of little grommets. And of course, you're almost obligatory these days. Little colored screwdriver. Sometimes I think that, you know what, my hobby is I collect these little damn screwdrivers and I just vape occasionally. Really starting to feel that way at times. But here is the piste de resistance. Aha! The billow version. Dos. All right. Now what we have here basically is we have a nice, fairly good wide draw. It's also a Delrin base with stainless steel. Haven't tried it yet, of course, so that should actually keep that drip tip from giving you a bad case of sizzle lips just real quick. Now let's take this puppy apart right quick. There are a few cons here that I'm not overwhelmed with. Nice thick base top here. You can see that's good, solid and heavy. Very nice size tank. I do love that. Now, this is where things get kind of odd and trip me out. I was trying to unscrew maybe this top piece here or just this piece here from the base. And as it turns out, yeah, the whole freaking thing comes up. I'm not sure exactly whose idea that was. Okay, but that's, I can live with that. It's a one piece chimney, but okay, you think, but wait. There's another chimney piece here. This is the part that I don't like. Now, this is copying off of UD Technologies Goliath in that you can take the whole entire base out without emptying your tank so you can work on your wires and your wicking, then put it back in, which is a brilliant idea on their part. Efro and his Siggity, sorry guys, but look at this. This is basically half of a two-piece chimney you would live, it looks like, and that's what covers your base. Now, if you didn't have this, this would actually be a pretty freaking good idea. Now you just take, just unscrew your tank, work on your stuff, put it back in. But now you've got this extra piece. You see what I'm saying? You got to take this stupid thing off so we can work on this and put this back on, then screw it back in. Unlike the Goliath where you just unscrew it, do your deal, screw it back in. You don't have this little extra piece in the damn way. But, okay. As cons go, that's not a bad one. Now as far as air goes you have these two massive holes one on either side and of course this base ring here now as you can see it turns it goes click click it only goes that far that way and that far that way so it don't just spin completely running around like your atlantis which is a good thing for this of course on the fun part is look at those two ginormous holes up at the top then you add in that chimney getting some fairly decent airflow from that i'm going to tell you that's actually very comparable to the uv technology goliath so yeah and with the shape of that chimney being fat down to skinny it's going to condense it down probably i'm expecting some good flavor but i'm gonna to have to come back to you on that once i get her done of course you got a uh, copper contact pin here now i'm gonna take this sucker and toss it in some isopropyl alcohol and i'll be back in about four hours Later, Tater. I want to come do a quick comparison between the original Billow 1 and the Billow 2. Let you get a look at what your what the main differences are between them. 
not so much a head to head as just kind of looking at what the differences are. Now, looking at the original Bill 01, for those of you who did not try one of these, this top screw up here is where you would bottom fill this puppy. Now, I never did bother to do this. I, what I would do is unscrew the very top of it, pour it directly into the tube, and then screw it back down. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, me and the Bill 01 didn't get along very well. She had a bad habit of the coils gunking before I could get maybe halfway through that big tank, and that'd be about it. Or, for most of the builds I did, she would just get too hot in the mirror, apparently, and the wicking wasn't proper, and it would burn the cotton out. And it just didn't work too well, and it just, it was a, it took a lot of trial and error, and it just, very finicky tank, whereas, like I said before, the goblins and the goliaths don't really care. Just throw some old janky build in there, and they go, and they work. The billow couldn't say that. She was very, very finicky. You had to have your stuff on the money or she just wouldn't work with you. She was very, very picky. Now, another thing to remember is usually there's two holes. These two holes at the bottom have screws in them. Those are your airflow control screws. Kind of like what you get stuck with on the Limo version one. Now, of course, you can see I took them out. Now, this doesn't work really well on some particular mods like uh, my Segelis. I have to actually screw this up a little bit because, as you know, the billow, when it screws down on top of that Segeli, just flush mounts. It flushes. There's it, it, That just basically plugs your holes. And those are useless at that point, so you have to back it up a little bit to get some airflow. Now, some mods, like your mech mods and such with juice channels or my Teslas, they actually have the little juice channels built in, one of the, and boom, I, get, I still get my airflow. That's just something to remember on these. And also, if you look, there's your holes there, how small they are as compared to these ginormous Booger Bears here you know, on the Billow 2. So they really improved that. And you go to the base, and yeah, you can see there's a tremendous amount there. Now, next thing we're going to look at is the actually the way they did the juice channeling. And to be honest, there's not a tremendous amount of difference here. This isn't, you know, a total redesign. It doesn't look, it does not appear to me. I get my little free blue screwdriver. I'm so excited to add this to my collection. And when you look at these, and you look at your juice channels here, they are fairly close to the same. There's not a tremendous amount of difference in them. What they did do was the juice channels do appear to be a bit larger, and they've also milled out a deck up here at the very top so instead of it just being a straight straight channel like on the billow one they've actually added a deck up here to let the cotton sit and you pull little strands down in there haven't tried it yet as i said i'm about to go build some coils for them and we're going to put them together but other than that they pretty much just they didn't make any tremendous design changes to the actual base itself other than widening the holes as you can tell the decks if you look at them side by side they're so close to them they're very very close just you got larger holes and they basically milled a little bit of a deck into the juice channel. Nothing tremendous there. We'll see if she's uh, up to par here in just a second. We'll be back. Hold tight. And we're back for round three. A little foggy up in here. Now what I did was I took the Billow 1 and the Billow 2. Got out my Coil Master jig. I made four coils out of 26 gauge Canthal. So each one will be wired exactly the same. Both both tanks wicked in Shishido cotton. Both are sitting on top of a Segeli, one on top of my usual Segeli, and the other on top of Scary Clown. Both, at, both are weighing in at 3 ohms at 40 watts. The juice is Dr. Creme's Creme Brulee. That way the juice is the same. It's a juice I'm very familiar with. I ordered this 500 mils at a time. It's my favorite. What better one to test it on because I know it inside and out. I'll know which one is the better just because of the fact I know the juice so well. Everything the same, as close as we can get to identical, except the tanks themselves. Now, the first main difference is going to be the Billow 1, as I said earlier, has screws in the base that control airflow. I've taken those out. But sitting on top of the Segeli, it is flush. Therefore, it's not getting the most air. Those two holes are basically closed off, and you've only got these two. But we're going to hit it like that first as a baseline against this. So here we go. Mm, pretty good stuff. A 
lot more vapor, a significant improvement in vapor and flavor. Just everything is significantly improved. Now, we take this one by the base, turn it a couple of times, get the gap under there, let the air flow under to get to those holes. I'll try this yet one more time. <clears throat> now, I will tell you that is a definite improvement for the Bill 01. And just a straight up removal of those two holes, I mean, those two screws from the holes. Next, we're going to try out this one. Same old, not even changing, not, nothing to change here. Uh, still getting more flavor. And more vapor. It's it is just a heads and shoulders improvement all the way around. I am now officially retiring the Billow One. Gonna have to sell that sucker. Trade off or something. Got too many. Now, I know what y'all are thinking. Well, Joe, you got some other tanks there. How do they kind of compare with the other tanks? Well, I'm gonna stick with uh, dual coil. I'm not even gonna look at the single coils. Uh, one of those that I've had is the Yilong Fogger V5. I've tried some of the Foggers. They're basically, you're looking at dual coil limos. Limited airflow. Flavor is, of course, going to be limited because of this. Not even going to bother buying a Fogger. Don't even bother in my book. They're just, they're basically like a limo. Dual coils does not help a limo. Just not enough airflow in there. Just, there's just not. Now, yes, you could bore it over. Why are you going to buy a tank that you got to bore over when you can buy another tank for the same, actually cheaper, that's already got everything right. You follow me? So, another tank that everybody knows Uncle Jojo does love is the Goblin by UD Technologies. Now, if I were to choose a Billow 2 versus a Goblin, I'm going to take the, I'm going to take the Billow 2. It's actually moved up and eclipsed the Goblin in my book. The reason? It does have better flavor. It's not a huge draw dropping. It's not going to blow your mind. It's not going to make you jump up and down. You're not going to squeege. But hey, it does have better, a little bit better flavor, a little bit better airflow than the Goblin. It holds more liquid, as you can tell. It holds more liquid. Yes, sir. It's easier to work on. So all in all, it's a better tank than the Goblin. I'm more, you know, the Goblin just has to step down a notch. It just has to step down to number three in my book. It was number two. Number one was the King Beast. There it is. The UD Technologies Goliath. Now the Goliath on top of that, a Rosewood 120, where that was sitting on the Ebony 120. I love my Teslas. Now, when you get these two, technologically speaking, the UD is the better of the two tanks. Main reason is this. When you take this base, you take your little screw. This is what controls your juice flow. Now, let's get something straight. Controlling juice flow, they did the same thing on the Delta II. You know, on your coils, you could turn the little... It's a gimmick. To me, in my book, it's strictly a gimmick. It sounds good. Uh, I have run the Goliaths 50-50, 60-40, 70-30, 80-20, and straight VG. And I run them, every, all of them, wide open. I run 50-50 wide open. I've yet to have a problem with flooding at all so i'm gonna say that really the juice control is kind of a gimmick it's something that sounds good but other than that it's just a gimmick the main thing it is good for and it is quite excellent for is what you want to do is before you take your tank off is turn it back so you got your large here that's open then as you turn it back over here that closes them off now at this point I went straight up now. Look at this. There's my tank. And as you can see, it's got juice in it, folks. You see the juice rolling. It's in there. But it ain't coming out of there because they're closed. I love that. I could take this tank off, set it down on the base like this. No leaks. I can set it up on the juice tip. If it falls over and goes to rolling around the table, fine. It's not going to make a mess. Next beautiful thing. There is my coils and my cotton. I can work on them. Just unscrew that, set it down. I could pull, put brand new coils and wicking in here, put the tank back on up of juice channels, boom, I'm done. I mean, that's genius. That is genius. This one, 
I'm going to go ahead and tell y'all, does not have juice controls. If you take this tank off, turn it upside down. Do not, I repeat, do not. You will not do it more than once unless you like cleaning up messes. No juice control means wide open. You take this tank straight up, it's going gonna, it's gonna to dump. Pretty much the whole contents of the tank is going to dump right there. Now, when you look at this puppy also, I'm going to turn it out. I think can't turn it much because if I do, I'm going to dump. Now, you see how the holes are. They run straight down the side of the glass. Straight down the side of that glass is where they're running. Right there. That is straight down the side of the glass. What that means is the liquid's going to run straight out. And there's four of those. See, there's four of them in there. And if you turn this sucker over on its side, folks, you're going to have a mess. <laughs> if you pick it straight up, you're going to dump pretty much everything out. It's going to make a mess. This is not a huge thing in tanks. We're used to it. But when you compare it to what the Goliath has, so they come in, you're coming up short. You're looking at, hey, the next evolution. Billow 2 is Sigony. Efro, sorry guys. Y'all are behind on this one. This one, this one you dropped the ball on. Other than that, build quality now is superb. I will give them that. Build quality is superb. No burrs. Everything screws together super smooth. Next con for the Billow 2. Y'all must like Joy. Y'all like, like Joy Tech, right? Y'all are Delta 2 fans. Cause see this? This is the same exact thing that they put on the Billa on the uh, I'm sorry, on the Delta 2 for the RBA deck. This little sleeve that screws down over the top of the RBA deck. I don't know why you did it, but it's a pain in my butt. Because it's not a huge thing unless you're used to a Goliath. When you're used to just taking the tank off, working, putting it back on with this, you got this extra step of having to screw this on and hope you don't get it dirty or lose it or what have you. And then we're going to come to, in my book, the final con of the billows, both one and two. Wicking. I have always had problems wicking these two tanks. Always. I've watched a ton of videos. I've wicked different ways. I've done everything I know to do. And it just will not wick consistently. And they don't wick very fast. This is my personal opinion of why. It's basically where the chimney, whether this this piece here or the chimney in the billow one, when this thing screws down, it pretty much closes off the juice holes. Why have ginormous juice holes if you're going to close them off with your chimney piece? I mean, honestly, let's just be honest. You can have a 12-inch pipe, but if you go down to a 2-inch pipe, you got a 2-inch pipe. It's effectively a 2-inch pipe now. So, this is what I do with the billow. If you look, right here, you see the gap? That's because what I do is I put this tank together loosely. I can no longer take the cap off. The, I used to take the cap off to fill it. Take this top here off, fill it. Screw it back on. Can't do that anymore. The reason being, I don't screw the tank, the chimney all the way down. That's why there is a gap right there that leaves that channel a little bit more open so a little bit more juice can get in there and it can actually wick. Because if you don't, it will not wick and it winds up burning the cotton out of the coils and you just, you wind up getting down to maybe a quarter to half a tank and it just quits. With me, it always does that. With this, the same thing. When I screw this down, Now that's all the way down. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take it here. One, that's half a turn. That's another half a turn. That's basically a full turn, full revolution, all the way back. And what I will do at that point is screw this back on. And you'll notice that there will be a gap. But I'm also leaving up a little room here to get some more juice into my tank. Now see, if you look, there is a little bit of a gap. It's not flush fitting. But on the same token, it doesn't leak either. That's all that matters. But it opens up those juice channels a little bit more so a little bit more juice can get in there so these dang things can wick. Now again with this one, and I'm going to tell you all, the, well, I'm sorry, I do have one more con. The finicky, finicky nature of the billows. The billow one was a very finicky little girl. If you didn't put your build in just perfect, she wouldn't work. She just wouldn't. Uh, sometimes they would leak if you didn't do them exactly right. I very rarely had a problem with leaking. Very, very rarely had a problem with leaking. That's usually not enough wick in the channels. But on the same token, it didn't just didn't want to wick very fast. And it caused problems. Like I said, it would burn the cotton out. The, go the Goblin, on the other hand, I've been in a hurry, realized I didn't have a tank ready and had to throw a build in there. Janky, ugly build. 
and I've thrown some, and just for the heck of it, just thrown some varied, some pretty varied builds in there, from the janky up to the pretty cool looking, and the goblin just says, okay, I'm down. Some work better than others, but they all worked. No leaks, and they all worked. It just, uh, it's just a very forgiving tank. The goblin is very forgiving. The goliath is fairly close. It's very close. It's not quite as forgiving, but it's a very close. It's very close. You can throw whatever you want to in there. The billow, mm, she's a very opinionated little lady. She's going to have things her way or it's going to be the highway. And I don't know. I've dealt with women like that before, and I don't deal with them for very long. Because if you tell me my way or the highway, Big Daddy Smooth Love says, bye bye Because you ain't the only one. You ain't the only tank. Now, they did improve on most of that with the billow too, but a few of those things is still a little bit finicky. I'm still backing up the collar. I'm still going to choose the Goliath. The Goliath does have slightly better flavor. It's not a huge amount, but it is slightly better. It's easier to work on. The technology is better. But the Billow 2 is still one hell of a solid tank. You're not going to regret buying it. It's not like it's a bad tank. Build quality is excellent. Excellent build quality. Again, beautifully put together. It's, very, it's a very beautiful tank. It's very stylish. It looks great. Works great. Everything about it is really good. It just has a few areas, just like everything, that needs room for improvement. The base screws on extremely easy, whereas the Goliath doesn't because they basically screwed into the threads. So everything has its pluses and minuses. Pick what you want. Uh, if you want a Bill 2 I would suggest you go grab one from E-Sigity. It's made by E-Sigity and Efro. It is a fantastic tank. I really enjoy it. You're not going to regret it. I don't think you're going to. This is not going to be a tank that you're going to say, oh, this is a piece of crap and chunk. It's a good tank. It's very solidly made. It's, I don't like it quite as much as I like the Goliath, but still, it's head and shoulders above the original, and it's a damn good tank. Very solidly made, very good tank. All right, today is Memorial Day. Well, tomorrow, actually, today Sunday. Tomorrow is Memorial Day, Monday. I want y'all to remember something. We're not just getting a three-day weekend so everybody can act stupid and sit around and cook out. Okay? Memorial Day is to celebrate our veterans. The reason we have a Memorial Day. The reason we can have a Memorial Day is because they paid the price with blood, sweat, and tears. They go in harm's way so you and I can do what we do. We owe them a debt we cannot repay. A lot of people tell me, oh, I'll just sit around a base. You full of crap. I know quite a few people in the military, and I'm going to tell you right now, they work some horrendous hours. They work long hours. They work many, many days in a row. It ain't like us. We work uh, 8 to 6 Monday through Friday. No. They work, they, they work from the time they get up to the time they go to bed. And them folks putting in some horrible hours out in the weather and whatever. And they don't get paid very much. You know, they get free housing and free medical. That's why they do it. You're going to take a job. You can get your butt shot off so you can get some decent benefits. Really? Are you that dumb? No, you do it because you love your country. You love your country and you're willing to, you're willing to sacrifice some time out of your life to make yourself better in the process. That's it. So max respect to all the veterans. For the veterans' families, especially the spouses, when your spouse is out, gone away, deployed in Afghanistan, Iraq, or they're just at another base somewhere, and you ain't seen them in months, maybe a, a year or more on end. That takes tremendous dedication and love and strength to do that, to hold the family together while your spouse is gone, serving. Much love and respect for you. Thank you. You have done a huge thing. We love you. That's what this day is all about. Just thanking. So when you see a veteran, thank them. That's every day. Make every day Veterans Day. When you see a veteran, you know they're a veteran. Thank you for your service. I appreciate you. I appreciate you sacrificing. Whether it's in the past or the present, it doesn't matter. They sacrificed. They did more than you did. If you ain't been in the military, I haven't. I tried. My eyes were too bad. But hey, I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to thank you. I'm going to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Because I I, if it weren't for you, I'd be speaking Germanese. Or Japa German, or some God only knows what language I'd be speaking, but I sure as hell wouldn't be up in here making these little videos, would I now? No, sir. Now, at the end of that, I hope the Lord's blessing you as he is blessing me. If he's not, get with him and his son. Jesus is the way, my brother. He is the one and the only. The only way. No one goes to the Father except by the Son. That's right. He said, I am the way, the light, and the truth, and no one goes to the Father except by me. He is the one. Talk to him. He gets you right. And as always, Uncle JoJo says, I love you. I hope you have a great, great, great weekend. Special shout out to Magnolia Vapes, one of my local B&Ms here. Um, just want to say thank you for being there. I, you went in the other day and 
just a really great bunch of people they got in there. They were really friendly, really knowledgeable, really enjoyed just hanging around for a few minutes, getting out of the place and hanging with them for a little while. So I just want to give them a shout out. Do these things, you know. And hey, while you're at it, hey, and somebody from Magnolia Vapes, y'all see this? Get you some, get you some of this creamy juice up in there. I plug my boys. Get you some blends by Bryce, some Sinister, some Bionic. There you go. You got some good juices there. All right, I'm out of here. Y'all have a good weekend. And as always, peas and cornbread.